So what are mitochondria? They are tiny little organelles inside each of our cells. They do all the energy generation for the cell. So you typically have about 100 mitochondria in your cell. They're, they then they kind of move around and they, they, they combust the glucose and the oxygen and they make ATP. And that's what the cell uses to do everything it does. And they have their own tiny little mitochondrial DNA, which are rings. And the nuclear DNA is 3 billion base pairs. The mitochondrial DNA is only 16,000 base pairs. So that's a good example of just how small they are. And they're very similar in a lot of ways to, um, <clears throat> they're very similar in a lot of ways to what you see in bacteria, because that's originally where mitochondria came from. Originally, the theory is that they were bacteria floating around a billion years ago. And they joined in with the DNA and made us. A billion years later of mitochondrial and, and nuclear DNA evolution has produced us, right? So what doctors know this, and this has been studied for many years, mitochondrial decline as we age is one of the underlying reasons for many, many, many diseases. Uh, and, and it's really very simple. Your, your cells run on energy. And when you're 20, of course, you're, that's at your peak. That's when you're, uh, you're, you're, you're full size, your mitochondria are in perfect condition. The mitochondrial DNA are all in perfect condition, but that declines as we get older. And we're learning a lot about how that decline works. And it causes all these diseases because there's just not enough energy for the cells to do their job properly. Okay. It's really just that simple. You might have other reasons for getting diseases. You might be predisposed towards cardiovascular disease or or, or Alzheimer's or uh, any of these other things, diabetes, uh, arthritis. But the mitochondrial energy decline is what kind of triggers it. So why do mitochondria decline? And this is something that we've actually been studying as part of our work. Uh, I just want to show you a mitochondrial DNA scan. And this actually is my mother, okay, who is now 94, who was kind enough to let me analyze her mitochondria. And what you're seeing here is actually the DNA structure of her mitochondria we got from a urine sample. Each gray line, you can kind of see these, these gray lines across. Each of those is one strand of mitochondrial DNA we got about 500 of them and we sequence them and we lay them in a plot. This is a very common way of doing it. <clears throat> and what you see here in this plot, of course, the genes, mitochondrial DNA encodes about 10 or 12 genes. Um, but what you see are the, all these little dots and lines. These are all errors. Okay. These are damp, what we call damaged sectors. It's like the sectors on a hard disk. As you get older, your mitochondrial DNA is replicating constantly. And every replication, there's a chance of a little bit of an error creeping in. So my mom actually has a damage score of 25%. And then this is mine. And by the way, mitochondria are passed down from the mother to the child with absolutely no modification. There's about 500,000 mitochondrial DNA in each egg cell. The nuclear DNA comes from the father and the mother. The mitochondrial DNA just comes from the mother. And so I have exactly the same as my mother. So in theory, it should look the same. But you can see the difference. I only have an 11% damage score, okay? This is my nephew who also has exactly the same mitochondria because he's descended through my, my sister. He has a 7% damage score. And so what we can do is we can look at the damage in the mitochondrial DNA and we actually can and see with, with a lot of massaging, we were able to get a line here that shows the decline over time. And <clears throat> it's actually at the point where you can almost predict at what point someone, if they, if they manage to dodge all the other diseases of aging, there's a certain point when you hit, a, hit the point where your mitochondria just can't do the job anymore. And that's when people start to, they just fade away and that's when they pass away of old age. OK, so, uh, of course, there's a lot of other pieces of aging. There's a lot of other things at aging, but the mitochondrial component is its own aging curve.
which is very, very important. The other thing is that that can, that can accelerate. If you drink a lot, if you smoke, if you have other kinds of diseases, like people who have multiple sclerosis, for example, if you have a disease for 30 years that you're fighting, a chronic disease, then your body's constantly battling. And what happens is your mitochondria get burned out faster. And so you age quicker. And that's why you see people will die 20 or 30 years younger. Um, of course, there's many other reasons for that. You might get cancer or you might get an, get an injury, but that's, again, this question of how long are your mitochondria going to last you if, you if you were starting with perfect ones when you're young. So what's the purpose of a mitochondrial bioreactor? Basically, our idea is, hey, let's go in every 10 years or every five years or whatever it turns out to be, and let's give you a boost of new mitochondria. If by 75 years old, you've lost, we think you've lost as many as 50% of your healthy mitochondria. Either they've been disposed of or they've, they've gotten damaged. If we give you a boost of another 20% of young, healthy mitochondria that we've grown externally, then in theory, we could prevent you from developing these aging diseases or even reverse them, okay? And you can see the chart goes out here into the into the hundreds. That's my hopeful. My hopeful side says, gee, maybe this will give us longer lifespans, but we don't, we're not counting on that, but you know, we're focused on the healing component primarily, but lifespan is a possibility. So of course, everybody says, well, wait a minute, how do you transplant mitochondria, right? That's, we can transplant livers, we can transplant hearts. How do we transplant mitochondria? And this is something that has come out in the last eight years or so. And it turns out that it is actually quite doable. Um, the way it would look to you is it would look like a blood transfusion, okay? And uh, of course, in the in the behind the scenes, it's much more complicated than that. It turns out that mitochondrial transplantation, mitochondrial uh, transfer, is happening in your body constantly. As you sit here right now, there are billions and billions of mitochondria being shifted around in your via your bloodstream and also in your brain and in your cardiac tissue mitochondrial transplantation is as we say pervasive and evolutionarily conserved it happens everywhere in the body and this is completely new science you're not going to see any of this in the traditional high school textbook most people think that mitochondria just sit there in the cell they're constantly in motion and we've proven this over and over again and and there's actually people doing this in human patients now. Uh, it's being used to treat diseases. It's being used to treat uh, people, for instance, in heart, who are getting heart surgery. So the technique that we're using, that we're leveraging to do our uh, technology is something called we call mitlets. It turns out that if your blood is full of platelets, which are usually used to create clots, and the platelets are created by the bone marrow, you create 100 million platelets every day. And then 100 million are disposed of after about seven to 10 days, they, they get thrown away. They're the most numerous blood cell in your, uh, in your blood. And they contain a whole bunch of mitochondria, five per platelet. And so we found that after those platelets are activated, they spit those mitochondria out in little vesicles, which we call mitlets. And those vesicles are absorbed by other white blood cells or platelets. So they're like little battery packs that the white blood cells and the platelets can exchange. And they're being recycled because mitochondria are extremely valuable and you don't wanna, um, you don't wanna lose any of them, okay? The body is evolved to preserve mitochondria whenever possible because they're very valuable and your your survival as a species, if you're running away to escape a leopard, your mitochondria are what get you the energy to, to escape. So they are pure survival and your body conserves them all the time. <clears throat> Here's an example of some testing we did where we showed, or uh, another team did where they found that the mitochondrial, these mitlets decline as you get older, right? 
And so we think that the decline of these mitochondria and the decline of the quality is a fundamental cause of aging. You just don't have as many of them supplying new mitochondria to your cells. And those mitochondria in your cells tend to burn out. They burn out after 10 or 15 years. The mitochondrial DNA aren't any good anymore. And so your body is supplying new ones to supplement them. So <clears throat> if we're going to cure diseases, how do we do that? The way there is no supply of mitochondria. I mean, we could, we're not going to go out and squeeze mitochondria out of teenagers. That wouldn't be popular at all. So uh, we have to figure out some way to grow them. And that's fundamental to any kind of adult, adult disease treatment. And so we are developing bioreactors, which are basically stem cell bioreactors that are specialized for growing and harvesting a mitochondria. We have a technology for encasing them in a specialized coating, a protein coating, so that they're protected. And then you just infuse them. Uh, that Also, that protein coating has receptors in it so we can target the mitochondria to go to um, specific organs. Okay, so they could go to your heart, your liver, your whole body. It's whatever we uh, choose. And of course, you can also inject them in different places. So... Uh, I'll show you some of that, some of those tests. So uh, so if you were going to get a bioreactor treatment, let's say, you know, five, 10 years from now, it would be very much uh, similar to a lot of the kind of um, genetic treatments that they're already doing. You go in, you give some blood, uh, they take your mitochondria from your blood, we grow them in massive quantities, we coat them, and then we put them back into your body, okay? Alternatively, we might mass produce them with some sort of common format. Turns out there's not very many types of mitochondria. There's there's 26 major groups that kind of spread across the world, uh, depending on the migration of the human species. Different different ethnic groups have different mitochondrial types. So it may be that we could create a, a storehouse of a couple different couple dozen variations, and and we could use those instead of creating them from scratch. So we've been around for three years. We've been doing a whole bunch of testing of this concept. A lot of other people in other universities are doing similar things. Here's one that I like. We took mice at University of Kentucky. We injected them with, um, with sepsis. So we basically gave them sepsis, which would normally be fatal in 24 hours. That's a, a bacterial infection. These were older mice, 13 months old. And then we gave them massive injections of these mitlets that we collected from the platelet trans uh, platelet donations that we got from young mice. So we got hundreds of young these very young mice and got platelet donations from them and extracted the mitlets and we injected them into these older mice. And when they get these mitlet injections, they survive. That's the blue line here. Okay. So it's this amazing thing that you could uh, effectively we're giving them the same immune system that they had when they were younger. We're reversing the age of the immune system. People say, well, is that really reversing the age? I don't know. It's hard to say. What is age, right? Is age just energy? In some cases, maybe it is. I'll be talking more about that uh, later at the end of the session. I'll talk about longevity. We also did a thing where we just injected mice with a whole bunch of these mitlets to see what would happen. And we got much they got they got stronger they started running on their wheels like crazy they grow back their their brain tissue and that's something that Ben will be talking about in a, about half an hour um so it's really a way of of making them basically become younger again and by the way we've also extended this work now just started in dogs uh, we did a test where we injected a bunch of mitochondria into the eye, into the retina of some mice. These red, this red stripe down here is what's called the RPE layer, and those are red fluorescent mitochondria. And this blue tissue is the retina. And you can see we injected them in one part of the retina, and they spread all the way across. They actually end up going down into the optic nerve. They'll go up into the cornea. Mitochondria just kind of spread in the whole eyeball. Basically, the goal is to make the eyeball younger, okay? <clears throat> so anyway, that's our that's our our 
work. That's what we're working on. And the goal here is to get this into uh, immune system tests, retina, skin, muscle. These There's a whole bunch of dis different, what we call indications there that, that can be uh, tested on and could be potentially cured, okay? I always tell people to remember, this is already in use in human beings. People always say, oh, how long till it's in human beings? There are doctors using mitochondrial transplants right now in heart surgery. They have used them in some rare childhood diseases. It's very, very new. It's very rare. We're trying to move it into the bigger world by growing them in bioreactors. And the, obviously we would like to have a worldwide network of these bioreactors providing supplemental mitochondria for everybody. The way that we look at longevity is, and, and people say, oh, there's health span and there's lifespan. And I don't really, I don't make a big differential between them. I think that if we want to improve people's health at 70 years old, this is the way to do it. Because everybody knows you hit about 70, 75, 80 years old, and, and, and it doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how much you, how hard you work, you just start to lose ground, and then by the time you hit ninety, boom, you're really losing ground fast. I mean, my dad was skiing when he was ninety, and then he finally had to quit. He said, "I just don't have the leg muscles anymore." Your your leg muscles actually decline one percent a year after you're thirty years old. So, we think that mitochondrial um, transplants are going to be absolutely critical for any kind of longevity treatment, whether it's whether it's for 80-year-olds or for giving people longer lifespan. Because if you have 50% of the mitochondria you need in your body at the age of 80, you're not going to be able to regain any ground. If we want to reverse the aging process or even slow it down, we've got to restore those mitochondria. And I always tell people, again, it's like looking you know, thinking of a if you think about refurbishing a laptop, here's another battery analogy. You know, you always replace the battery in a laptop when you rebuild it. <laughs> so anybody who's ever bought one of those refurbished laptops from online, they always put a new battery in because if you don't have power, you can't do anything else. Yes, we're going to clean it. We're going to clean the keyboard. We're going to install a new operating system. Maybe we'll put more RAM in there, but you're always going to put in a new battery. That's That's the starting point. And so that's my argument for longevity is that mitochondrial transplant will be a foundational component of all longevity treatments and also a foundational component of a whole bunch of just plain medical treatments. We think you'll be hearing a lot more about this. We, I, I think that there's uh, an enormous number of, of medical conditions that, um, are unsolvable and incurable because we haven't addressed the loss of energy. And if we address that, then we will get a handle on them. And people are talking about Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a very big target for mitochondrial work. Um, we're talking about eye disease, AMD, glaucoma. Those are all big targets for mitochondria. <laughs>